ladies and gentlemen, you must acquit. When I finally found acting, I, you know, I found out that acting was sharing your emotions. He's an award-winning actor, but today he's sharing some very personal experiences. What do I do when you're sitting on the edge of your bed at 2 in the morning and go, who am I? He recently co-wrote a book about the struggles of mental health and depression with a best-selling author and radio host. And if people like us can't tell the truth, not only does it dis is it a disservice to everyone else, but it means that we're ashamed of our journey. Courtney B. Vance, Dr. Robin L. Smith, now on The Pulse. Guys, welcome to another episode of The Pulse. This one's a little bit different because we do have people who are making a difference. We do have people who are well known. We've got award-winning actor, Courtney B. Vance. We've got award-winning and best-selling author, uh, Dr. Robin L. Smith. Um, but we're, we're talking about some very important, specific topics today, and that's what makes this one a little bit different. I appreciate both of you coming in. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you, Bill. The Invisible Ache. Yes. And the Invisible Ache, new book, A Journey, uh, talking about black men, our pain, experiences, um, and a message that needs to be out there. But how did you two come together to decide to do this? We share a management team, a manager and publicist, Gilda Squire. Courtney uh, and he'll speak, of course, more specifically, but his father died in 1990 of suicide. And that was, of course, devastating. And uh, he writes and shares um, very transparently about that loss and journey. But in 2020, uh, his godson, who was only 23 years old, died of suicide. Mm -hmm. Intact family, family that um, had resources of love, resources of support. They were there. They were hands-on, you know, parents. And uh, he went to the hospital twice. He was discharged, sent home twice, um, simply because he seemed to be okay. And there was no third time. His godson uh, died by suicide. And Courtney said, no more, no more suicide deaths of black men and boys. Um, but what can I do about it, Gilda? And she said, well, there may be someone. And she reached out to me and scheduled a conversation to see if Courtney and I had, you know, any synergy, if mm -hmm. there was anything between us mm -hmm. um, other than being highly skilled people. And our hearts said hello um, at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And the rest really is history with the invisible eight black men identifying their pain and reclaiming their power. Black men traditionally, we don't talk about that. We mm -hmm. don't talk about, we don't talk about pain in general, but we certainly don't talk about specific pain and how it impacts us. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, why would you decide, okay, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this all out there. We black men know that uh, it's, it's not encouraged. Uh, I mean, in, in our society in general, there's certain things that we just don't talk about. We don't talk about, um, you don't talk about religion. You don't talk about politics, you know. So, you know, there's certain things that we know we don't touch. And, you know, I, I was, I got into acting. I didn't know anything about acting. I didn't know anything about what I wanted to do. But when I finally found acting, I... You know, I found out that acting was sharing your emotions, mm -hmm. exposing your emotions. And so I, I had, I began to have practice doing that. I'm at home on the stage back 30 years ago. I was at home. I realized I'm very at home. I know what to do when I'm on the stage. Mm -hmm. And my therapist at the time said, but Courtney, you're not on the stage all the, most of the time. But then it, 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 it's incumbent upon me to figure out where do I go from here? How do I, and one of the things my therapist at the time said to me, she, you know, she said, Courtney, how do you make decisions? I said, well, like everybody else does, I, right? I mean, I, <laughs> I know, right? 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 And, um, I flip a coin, isn't that what, <laughs> I mean, and acting, that's what she said, okay, that's, I mean, she's clocking, okay, do we need to do one session a week or 
two sessions a week based on what he's saying. Um, and, uh, and she said, Courtney, do you have the patience do you, to let the mud settle in the water and the water become clear? Whatever we do, we got to work at it. We have to do, we work at it. so many other things, but work at ourselves. And we were talking to a young man a couple of days ago and he said, I don't think I'm, what is it, worthy of work? I don't have the luxury. I don't have the luxury of working on myself. Right. And we were just, you know, basically saying, you don't have the luxury of not working on yourself. But we don't, and again, I, I keep going to the, the we mm -hmm. in black men, because mm -hmm. it, it is different, isn't mm -hmm. it? We, we mm -hmm. go to church, you know, we'll talk to friends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not something that, that you are comfortable acknowledging mm -hmm. that we need yeah. or should have. Yeah. Is that the norm? Is that the challenge? Not only, <clears throat> pardon me, not only need or should mm -hmm. have, but are worthy of. And men, and black men, and all men, really, are conditioned to not know mm. what they need, to not mm. know that there's a whole person in them. So when we hear, you know, never let them see you sweat and don't cry, you know, uh, that tells me that that person has only been partially educated. We talk about in The Invisible Ache that we all have holes, H-O-L-E-S, all of us, not just weak people, <laughs> not sick people, but all people have holes. Longing to be whole, W-H-O-L-E, which is a holy H-O-L-Y journey. We say in the book also, we don't ask black men and boys, do you hurt? We ask, where does it hurt? I, I, I didn't think I, I needed. I, that was, it never came up in, in our household because I was busy achieving. Right. I mean, I'm achieving. I, I did the IV and, and then I didn't know what I wanted to do and then I, acting and then, so then I got to the pinnacle of acting which go to the Yale Drama School. And then at Yale Drama School, I end up with August Wilson and Lloyd Richards and James Earl Jones and Mary Alice. And all of a sudden, I'm at the pinnacle of the Tony Pulitzer Prize winning play. And, I, and I'm introduced into the theatrical world and the cinematic world. And I'm on top. So that should be enough to, to launch me in, yeah. into, right. into life, right? I'm, I'm launched into life you're now, right? <laughs> throwing I'm, stuff. I'm, I'm yeah. launched you're into the life. Like yeah. You're achieving. Right. You're good. Right. And then. And then yeah. life happens. What do you do? Eventually, you can hide from it, and you think that, you know, we don't talk about it, but eventually you're going to come up, and then that, you can dust that book off the shelf yeah. and open it up and go, I see what he was saying. I'm at a crossroads in my life, and what do I do when you're sitting on the edge of your bed at 2 in the morning and go, who am I? outside of, you know, my achievements. Yes. Mm -hmm. Doctor, who am I? Yeah. Coming up, to the outside world, you may be thriving, but inside? I'm, I know that if I hurt in, in an achievement trajectory, everybody. It is preposterous to say that African Americans collectively are so emotionally unstable that they cannot hear offensive words without losing their moral sense of right and wrong. They live with offensive words, offensive looks, offensive treatment every day. And so, Your Honor, I am ashamed that Mr. Darden would allow himself to become an apologist for Mark Furman. Who are any of us to testify as an expert as to what words black people can or cannot handle. How has it been received? Mm -hmm. Because you are Courtney B. Vance. Mm -hmm. You are high achieving in mm -hmm. your Harvard and Yale, and you're mm -hmm. supposed to be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you're going out publicly saying, mm -hmm. men, women, black men, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't okay. Like, mm -hmm. I had things that I need to do. How do people respond to that? I'm, I know that if I hurt in, in an achievement trajectory, everybody does. Mm -hmm. the, you're so, sometimes you're so busy achieving, 
you don't pay any attention to your relationships, you don't pay attention to your family. And so that's not a black thing, that's a human thing. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Robin, you have, for, for years, you've been spreading this message or messages similar. You're mm -hmm. doing it on, on satellite radio shows, you're doing it in best-selling books, you're doing it on, in radio, TV, mm -hmm. for years. How important is it that people see that even you know, the high achieving have issues. Like, does that help people recognize it's okay for me too? Absolutely, Bill. People are relieved when they hear his story. People are relieved when they hear mine because we're talking about both of us having achieved so much and both of us having an invisible ache. Mm -hmm. It's part of being human. It's necessary for someone like Courtney B. Vance to say to the world that he ached. But you don't just stop aching. Um, our issues move with us mm. and we move with them. And there's a statement that says, if you don't deal with your issues, your issues are going to deal with you. Mm. And so what we're inviting people to do in the invisible ache is to become the narrator, the content provider of the life they want to live. There is an African proverb that says, the lion's story will never be known as long as the hunter is the one who tells it. And if people like us can't tell the truth, not only does it dis is it a disservice to everyone else, but it means that we're ashamed. Mm -hmm. We're ashamed of our journey. Mm -hmm. He's saying, yes, I am Courtney B. Vance. And as he is rising up even in that chair right now, and I'm a whole human being, I have pain and I have gain. I have joys and I have sorrow. That is such a different model than looking at someone who is airbrushed and Instagrammed <laughs> and all these things that aren't real. Coming up, it was a very personal loss in his own family that started this journey. What, what do you do when all of a sudden you've done everything right mm -hmm. and life happens? Finish these sentences. Okay. The thing that matters most to me is dignity and our inalienable right to be free. What is freedom? Freedom is being who you are unapologetically. I am grateful for this moment. One of the things that stood out in, in both of you sharing struggles uh, was with the, the suicide of your godson. It was made very clear that nobody did anything wrong. And it, it, it resonated to me like, forgive yourself. You didn't necessarily do anything except maybe this person needed help. Mm. Now, is that, is that one of those messages, I guess, that needed to be heard, that it you, wasn't anyone's fault necessarily? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and again, uh, uh, it, it's just life. It, yeah. you know, it happens. Sometimes we were in the car and, you know, my uh, uh, company manager called me and said that some, one of our staff is in crisis. And, you know, it's, what do you do? What, what do you do when all of a sudden you've done everything right mm -hmm. and you've taken care of this and taken care of that and life happens to you? And I think that's all we're saying is that, you know, get some tools. Uh, it is important to know we could <clears throat> have made really great decisions as parents or partners or friends and someone is still depressed still full of anxiety. Um, we, Twitch, who died by suicide, I mean, we don't know his story intimately, but people were shocked because he seemed like everything was good. And there are so many men and boys who are being told to say, I'm good. That's part of what the formula has been, the conditioning has been to deny your whole self. And so Courtney just said, not only is it life, like things happen. And sometimes, Bill also, we did make a poor decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's also part of life. Like 
if I knew what I knew now, I would have done something different, but I didn't know. I, I didn't know to say to my son, um, you know, when my daughter cries, I ask her what's happening and do you want to talk about it? When my son cries, I say, stop that. I mean, come on, you grow up, uh, man up, man you know, up. I mean, man yeah. up. Like, what is that? That That's that's an attack. <laughs> I mean, no, but really. What does it mean? What, right, what does it mean? That's an attack on that person's humanity. When you tell someone to man up, you are attacking the very part that many women say they're trying to elicit from a man, and then when it shows up, they want to condemn it. You know this as an actor. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like you can decide you're going to really lean into the humor of something, but I'm going to stay away from the sorrow. Your acting would not be what it is mm -hmm. if you were not able, because it's all one pot called humanity, called feelings. The other thing that Courtney brings up that I just want to highlight is that push-pull of worthiness. Mm -hmm. I mean, am I worthy, is what he's saying, for something more? Or is suffering just the way it's going to be? And I tell people when they say, it, it's just too much work to find a therapist, to find you know, I don't have insurance. I don't, I mean, so the list of things, all of which may be true, hmm. but they become an excuse for self-neglect. Self-care is, is radical. Hmm. It's radical for a man. We're talking about breaking shackles on the inside, on our minds, hmm. the way in which there are lies that we've attached to in our heads about who we are or who we're not. Hmm that as we dismantle that and we replace it with new information, over time, that becomes what is real. Coming up, they discuss why it's so important for high profile people to share and share so publicly. When the conversation is uncomfortable, we create a safe space to be uncomfortable in because growing doesn't always feel. You've heard people say, oh, for, excuse me or forgive me when they start crying. I'm like, what would you be? A See, we're apologizing for being human. But I will tell you, if you have capped your sorrow off, you are also capping your joy. I want to encourage everybody to pick up the book, but also just people who have watched and listened, I encourage you to try to get to one of the book signings, one of the conversations that you two continue to tour, because I think that people could see that effortlessly, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot of things that we could all use some guidance or assistance yeah. in. Um, there is a lot that in open, comforting conversation among friends who are all sitting there because of the book, um, can be beneficial to all of us. Someone asked us the other day, last night, you know, when does the healing, is the healing from the writing of the book? Is the healing from the talking of the book? I said, baby, the healing is in living. Yeah. You know, we, we last night we checked in the hotel. Yes. We, you know, we're so exhausted. We've been driving for, <laughs> you know, two hours, you know, and the lady, you know, Miss Gilda, she went on to get, go, you know, to, to go to bed. She said, bye, y'all, and go to bed. <laughs> and we're standing at the desk, and we're asking a couple more questions to this young lady. And all of a sudden, we're in a deep conversation yes. with this young lady yes. about her, you know, COVID happened, and she got laid off. Yes. And, but she got more time with her babies. And right. She just had a baby and the other kiddos. Yes. And all of a sudden, we're like, girl, thank you for that ministry. Wait a minute, and then she said what I thought was not going to work out for me was God's highest plan for my Stop. life. You know, I, I asked you early on you know, whether or not how this is being received and are people responding. Yeah. And this conversation and the ones that you're sharing are the answer. I think it's going to help a lot of us. It certainly helped me, and I appreciate yeah. both of you. Thank you. And I here. just have to say this. And when the conversation is uncomfortable, that we create a safe space to be uncomfortable in. Because growing, maturing, doesn't always feel comfortable. And a lot of times these, these difficult quote unquote conversations in our minds are much more difficult than they actually yes. uh, end up being. Mm -hmm. that's, that's from practice. So true. Right? From yeah, practice. So true. I, 
you know, I, I just said, I got to go have a conversation with somebody. And, you know, my wife goes, oh, man, it's going to be so, you know, is this guy, are you going to be okay, Corey? I said, well, you know, I mean, it's going to be what's going to be. I, well, you know, I'm, and I, I always try to talk, you know, start with the positive and, you know, and then it, it always ends up being always. less drama than I. Yes. And, and if it is drama. Handle it's it. gotta happen. Right. It's just gotta happen. Right. Have it. It's a part. You know, we're gonna get. We're gonna. Sometimes the only way through something is straight ahead. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching a special episode of The Pulse, just because it was extremely topical with a couple of people who are trying actively to make a difference. I appreciate Dr. Robin and Courtney B. Vance for spending some time with us and the open nature of the discussion, and I hope you did as well. A reminder that you can hear the entire interview any place where podcasts are available. Just hit subscribe, and I will tell you there is a lot more to unpack on the podcast this week. Also, any past episodes, you can go search on YouTube and make sure you download the Fox Local app on Connected TV. That's Roku, Apple TV, and the like. Just search Fox Local, and then you've got our shows right there at your fingertips. Appreciate you as I always do, and leave you as I consistently do, reminding you that whenever you can, use your voice for good and have a good one.